Hi there, this is a short video just to explain the format of the IB chemistry exam. Um, it can get quite complicated understanding the different weightings and the components of the exam, but it's very important to understand it before you even uh, start preparing for your exams. So I've put together this little short presentation to try and make it clear for you. So the first slide here we have is we're talking about the four components and the IB are notorious for using tricky language to explain simple things. So in this case, the component is referring to the four parts that you'll be assessed on for your IB chemistry exam. The first part being paper one, which is going to be multiple choice questions, which I've abbreviated to MCQ and I refer to these as MCQs from now on. Um, it varies from standard level to higher level. So I'll explain that in another slide. The second component is paper two, which would be short answer questions. And sometimes there's a bit more of an extended response to that. Uh, paper three then is the third component, which has section A, a data response question, and also some questions on your prescribed practicals. And then the section B, where you talk about your option of choice. And the fourth component then is the internal assessment, which students love talking about. Um, you may also choose to do your extended essay in chemistry, and I can do a separate video um, on taking an extended essay in chemistry and my advice for that. So if we look at the breakdown for paper one here, whether you're higher level or standard level, and I just noted down the bottom here that this information has been cited from the chemistry guide, which is provided to all teachers from the, the International Baccalaureate Organization. So if you're a standard level student, paper one is three quarters of an hour, hour so 45 minutes. And the weighting for paper one is 20% if you're a standard level student uh, with 30 marks going for 30 multiple choice questions. So each multiple choice question is what one mark. And it's important to remember that. So whether it's a particularly difficult question on stoichiometry or a very straightforward question on equilibrium, they're both going to yield that one mark for you. So just be aware of that. There's also something interesting to be aware of too here, which is that about 15 of the multiple choice questions on the standard level paper are common with the higher level paper. So often I have standard level students coming to me asking what is the difference in difficulty between standard level and higher level chemistry. And to me, there's not that much difference in terms of the difficulty. The abbreviation AHL actually stands for additional higher level content, not advanced higher level content. So the A stands for additional higher level content to denote the fact that higher level students are actually taking additional content as opposed to extra difficult chemical co chemistry content. Um, so when you pick up a standard level paper and a higher level paper for paper one or for paper two, and I recommend you do this, you will see a lot of questions in common. And that's deliberately in the structure of the IB um, exams. The second bullet point here is that the questions on paper one test assessment objectives one, two, and three. So I thought I'd better just quickly show you what they mean by objectives one, two, and three. Um, so if we come out of this presentation for a second, um, we have another document here where we talk about these assessment objectives. So these assessment objectives here, again, this is from page 28 of the chemistry guide for uh, issued by the IBO. But effectively, the three main objectives that need to be assessed in papers one, two, and three have been ranked in terms of difficulty. So objective one here, um, demonstrating knowledge and understanding of facts and concepts is effectively recall. Um, objective two, which is applying facts and figures um, through maybe a calculation uh, would be an application objective. And then objective three is where you're formulating and analyzing and evaluating. So evaluation is a great key term when you think of a higher level objective. And when I teach chemistry to my students, I try to rank my three lesson objectives based on these um, assessment objectives as well. And so that a student develops the ability to understand or recognize what objectives they're capable of achieving and whether they're, um, uh, you're, if you're a three, four student here for um, objective number one, and then I would say a five to six student would be getting objective two, moving it to um, six to seven for objective three. So that's just a little look at what those objectives are. Going back to my presentation. So as we say here, um, the questions in paper one test assessment objectives one, two, and three, the use of calculators is not permitted on your multiple choice paper. So when I teach students to prepare themselves for paper one, 
I have a strict ban on use of calculators. So there's no point in using a calculator in the class when you're, when you're practicing multiple choice questions, or if you're doing a topic test for paper one and you're allowed to use a calculator, to me, that's, that doesn't help you prepare for your finals uh, for paper one. So don't use a calculator when you're, when you're doing these questions. And what you'll find is you'll see that the IB are not going to give you questions which are impossible to do through mental or written arithmetic. They're actually looking for technique and ways of dealing with numbers and units that don't necessarily require you to carry out a calculation in the end. So we'll take a look at some examples of those in the future. Um, you will be provided with a periodic table at the beginning of the paper one, and that is useful because you have um, relative atomic masses that you can use there. Um, also symbols for some of the elements that you'd be working with. Um, also, you can look and remind yourself of periodic trends and things like that with some of the other topics that you'd be assessed on. And no marks are deducted for incorrect answers, so it's absolutely inexcusable if you don't put some sort of letter down for a multiple choice question on your sheet. And for high level students, we take a look here. The duration for paper one is one hour. The weighting is the same, 20%, but you have 40 uh, multiple choice questions, each worth one mark. And the 40 multiple choice questions cover the core material and the additional higher level content. Again, reiterating the point that some of those are in common with the standard level paper. Um, the questions in paper one test objectives one, two, two, and three, just as for standard level, no calculators allowed. You're provided with a periodic table, and again, no marks are deducted for incorrect answers. So there is a lot of similarity between paper one, whether you're a standard level student or a higher level student, and there's no harm as a higher level student to practice standard level paper ones um, in preparation for your finals. So that's paper one. Okay, the structure of paper two, if you're a standard level student, it's an hour and 15 minutes. The weighting is 40%, so there's a big weighting for paper two if you're a standard level student, and 50 marks. Now, you may have eight questions on paper two, you may have seven, but the total marks will add up to 50. Um, you have short answer and extended response questions on the core material. You're often provided with boxes or spaces with lines to answer your questions on, so it's very important to stay within those parameters. So there's an expression of think outside the box, but write inside the box, because when these papers are sent away, they're scanned and the examiners only mark what's inside the box. And if you're writing outside the box, then it's ignored. Uh, questions in paper two, uh, again, are ranked based on these objectives. So you'll find they start off um, with maybe some recall, and then you're asked to think a bit more difficult questions uh, for later in the question. And now you are allowed to use a calculator. So make sure you know how to use your calculator and the OCC, which is the Online uh, Curriculum Center, has some notes on, on using a calculator. And hopefully your teacher gets you to practice using calculators for appropriate calculations. Now, this seems like a minor thing here, this last bullet point, the fact that you have a chemistry data book available to you. But I will continuously refer to the benefits of using your chemistry data book correctly um, when we go through paper two. Um, and paper three questions. If you know how to use a data book properly for standard level or higher level, it makes your life a lot easier. Similarly, for higher level, um, you have short answer and extended response questions. Uh, covering objectives one, two, and three, you're allowed to use a calculator and you're allowed to have a chemistry data book. The exam is an hour longer, though, at two hours, 15 minutes, yet the weighting is less at 36%. Um, so paper two is harder work for a higher level student, but it has a lower weighting. Next, we have paper three, the third component. Now, paper three is how I, is where I find uh, students uh, drop a little bit, and um, because of course paper three has this uh, first section A here, which has a data based question, which is effectively something you've never seen before, a context you've never seen before, and you have to deal with a graph or a table of data and interpret it. But of course, that's an essential skill for any scientist to be able to do. And so you are expected to make your best effort at answering that question. And um, you should get a question, a second question, maybe a third question, depends how they want to structure the paper, on experimental work. Now, in this case, we're referring to the prescribed practicals. And hopefully, your teacher will give you a list of what those prescribed practicals are. If not, they're easily found online. And so at least you know what the um, 10 or so prescribed practicals are. 
and have a read through the methods. Hopefully you've done them during your two years of practical work in school and know what those practicals involve so that you could predict what sort of questions would be asked about on them. Section B then is where you talk about your option and uh, the four options to choose from. And um, we'll talk about those four options in detail later in another video. Uh, but effectively, you choose one option and you prepare yourself for it and then answer your questions on that option. Uh, again, we're trying to cover objectives one, two and three. You're allowed to use a calculator and you have a chemistry data book um, available to you as well. One hour paper if you're standard level with a weighting of 20 percent, whereas if you're higher level, it is a hour and 15 minutes paper with the other 24 percent uh, weighting going for that. And then the same information there for a higher level student. The last 20% or the fourth component of your IB chemistry assessment goes for your internal assessment. Um, it's the same criteria for both standard level and higher level students and the overall weighting is 20%. So if you review those few slides I've been through and add all the percentages up for standard level or higher level, you should come to 100%. Um, it's recommended that a total of approximately 10 hours of teaching time for both standard level and higher level should be allocated to the work. Um, now this is open to interpretation as to how the teacher provides that um, time for you, but it should include the lab time that you spend working on your um, practical investigation, or in some cases students work purely through data analysis. Um, then you would have some time to write up your, your IA. The um, assessment criteria for the IA are quite detailed, so we can do a separate video series on planning for the IA and writing up your report. So at this point, then I would just like to lead into the video series that I would be preparing for uh, going through exam papers with you guys. Um, just to be aware of some background information again with how the IB chemistry course has changed. So the IB chemistry course underwent a review in 2015. And so the first year of assessment of this new course was in 2016. Uh, so you will see some documents from the IB online where they talk about first assessment being in 2016. So that means the most relevant papers for anybody that's taken their exams in 2018 at this stage would be to look at the sample or specimen paper for May 2016, and then look at the actual May 2016 paper itself, the November 2016 paper, May 2017, and November 2017. And that brings us up to the most up-to-date paper that exists before you guys sit your exams in May 2018. And once you've gone through those papers in detail, then you can start considering papers from the previous syllabus. And the more papers you practice, the less the surprises the IB can spring on you. So that would be my goal to go through each of those papers in detail and then work back through all the papers after that.